William Byron's race. I mean, just another example of a guy who is forced to be reckoned with and probably somebody we're going to see in Phoenix. Yeah, that I don't think there's any doubt now. And, and you know, you could look at that. And, and I think, you know, Burton and, and Dale Jr. both said yesterday that, hey, you know, this this wasn't a William Byron dominant performance like what he had at Watkins Glen. Um, you know, it was reminiscent of some others uh, wins that he's had this year of, of of setting himself up, never basically giving up on the races. I mean, you know, at one point he was mired back 18th to 22nd there um, as things happened uh, there in stage two. And, and I really wasn't sure that he had the car to, to find his way back to the front yesterday. Uh, I, I thought that he might have something that he could get back in the top 10. And of course, with his points, um, you know, that would have been good to set himself up well to, to go into these next two races in this round of 12. But, um, you know, he's just a, a battler and, uh, you know, he's confident in his abilities and he takes advantage of situations. And that's what you have to do is ready to, to do that. The, the things that he is doing and that Rudy is doing for him to put him in these situations, I mean, you know, this is the, the mark of, of champions and and the way that drivers and teams go about winning championships uh you know winning races when you not don't have your best days uh that that's how you do things and and do them in a big way and and go about winning and putting yourself in position to win championships so i look for him to be a part of the championship for no doubt uh easiest road to to get there for him i mean you know when you get to the round of eight that you're talking about um you know this it probably sets up as good for William Byron as anyone else in the field. Yeah. And, you know, he said after this race that he's going to be in the simulator probably tomorrow working on Vegas, which is a luxury. No one else is really going to have <laughs> the way that team is. And yeah, that's going to be, I think a, a huge advantage when you look forward to Vegas, Homestead, Martinsville. I and mean, those are three really good tracks for William Byron. And, you know, Rudy Fugel said it too, after the, after, the win yesterday that they're going to look now at, now they've got 41 playoff points. I mean, this is five more playoff points on yeah. top of the 36 they already had coming out of the regular season. Um, and now I think he said that they'll probably look at it. Like if we need 120 points to advance to the championship four, if that's kind of like the number, that's the benchmark. Yeah. Uh, that's like William Byron's probably need like 80 points in the round of eight. Now, granted he could win any of those three races, but if you're asking somebody of, that team's caliber to just average 30 points a race. Yeah. It just, it feels like it lays out really well for him right now. Yeah. Yeah. Unless there's just some, you know, something unfortunate happens at Las Vegas and then the pressure becomes a little bit more uh, for Homestead and Martinsville, two tracks that he's won at. Um, yeah. So, you know, he can, can certainly do that, but it does ramp up the pressure because you're literally getting down to it. But, um, you know, I, I think that, with what we've seen, uh, th there's nothing just telling us that that th this should be anything but um, simpler uh, for him. You know, it allows them to actually uh, look at it. And I know that a stage win is only one point, but you don't know when one point is going to make the difference. But it does allow them to do that these next two weekends, uh, you know, if nothing else, just to try to, to set themselves up to try to get a, another point or two uh, to have in the bank. And, and as you point out, if you're, if we're looking that he has to get, you know, you're, you're looking at less than 30, um, you know, if he goes yeah. in there with, with 41 that he has now or a little more. So, um, you know, that's just running average for, for that race team. And, and, you know, they should easily be able to do that. I think that it's everyone else that now, realizes that William Byron has, has set himself up as the favorite. Uh, he's put himself there. You know, a lot of other people are saying, yeah, you know, Denny's got a fast car. Larson's got a fast car. But, um, you know, I know Denny's in good shape with his points. But, you know, Larson's got a real battle on his hands. And, you know, that just takes his toll on you. Uh, you know, William's got uh, a couple of weeks to, to relax and prepare himself. Uh, for the next round, as everybody else is still looking at uh, the terrors uh, that uh, that come with racing at Talladega. Yeah, and you know, all of that happening too within the walls of Hendrick Motorsports with that Larson v. Byron battle, and I'll in the 300th win for Rick Hendrick. I'll just give you a chance to to comment on that, DJ, because of the historical significance. It's not the most ever by a team owner because Rick Hendrick got that mark 30 wins ago when he passed. <laughs> Petty Enterprises with 270. Uh, now he's got 300. I, I, I you know, 
I don't even know how to put it. I mean, it's not like it's a surprise. Everybody knows this is the best team in NASCAR and, you know, will go down as the best team probably for decades. Hi, I'm Parker Kligerman. For more access like this from Pit Road, be sure to click and subscribe to the Motorsports and NBC YouTube channel.